Hi, I'm Linket and welcome to a basic guide for Tradelands Melee Combat. This guide is meant for beginners mostly and if you have anything you want to know from it then I have divided into different chapters or parts and you can find the timestamps for those down in the description. And with that said, let's get into the first part of the video. So the controls in this game are a very basic uh, know-how for every player. Luckily enough, they're quite simple and easy to learn. And I'll quickly go over them, starting with the swing, which is your left click. And your sword will swing in a random direction, as you can see. For your block, you have right click. And you can change the angle of your block by moving your cursor around. Aside from that, there's also more about blocking that we will cover in part 3. Now moving on to scroll up, which is your stab. This being the most commonly used attack generally because of its high range. And last we have the overhead, which is scroll down. This isn't a very practical attack because of its weird hitbox, making it hard to hit your enemy. And that's just about it when it comes to controls, so moving on to... In terms of weapons, you have many choices for both regular craftable weapons and custom weapons or blacksmith weapons. You might want to start out using a short sword since it's very balanced and quite easy to make. And if you don't have a blacksmith table or a custom weapons table, you can still buy more specific weapons like the cutlass and the falchion from people selling them in trade. A oak and iron falchion, probably the best non-glowy weapon in the game, will cost you between 8,000 and 12,000 doubloons. But I can only recommend that if you have enough money to spend on these weapons regularly as they will break eventually. Or you go on trade runs often and don't mind spending some of your earned money on falchions. When you block, you have to consider many things, such as the angle of your block, which is heavily dependent on what attack your enemy is doing, and how much server lag you're currently experiencing. But blocking is also very efficient, as it uses up less stamina than running from your enemy. A hidden mechanic related to blocking that isn't very well known, is that if you time your block perfectly, your enemy won't be able to block for a second. This is useful if you know how to do it. If you have bad timing, you can risk getting hit before you're able to block. But timing your blocks well is useful in general, because just holding down right click will drain your stamina passively. And that's it for blocking, moving on to... Stamina is one of your most important resources, as it can help you win a fight if you manage it well, or lose one if you don't. One of the easiest ways to save up your stamina is to avoid running and jumping excessively when in combat, as those don't normally help you and they just use up your stamina. The timing of your attacks and your blocks is also very important and it can save you a lot of stamina too. Just make sure that you put server lag into consideration when you're trying to time your attacks. A useful way not to save stamina but to increase the amount you can have is by leveling up swordsmanship and brawling skills, which will increase your stamina cap. Positioning, while still important, is not a thing to worry about when you're starting out the game. A few basic tips that I have for you are First of all, to maintain a good distance from your enemy, or if you're using a closer ranged weapon, to try and close into your enemy. Also try and do this if your enemy is on regen, as you won't want them to regenerate some of their health. Also, always try to be facing your enemy, as that would help you if you're trying to block their hits. Blocking doesn't apply if they hit you from behind. But having good positioning is something you learn about by simply playing the game. So just try and think about your positioning more whenever you 1v1 someone the next time. Team fights are a little bit more specific, as you need to follow the rest of your team while still contributing and dealing damage to the enemies. Normally, a member of your team would be leading you, so try and follow what they're doing, whether they're pushing forward or retreating. You also need to keep some space between you and your teammates, as to avoid accidental team hits. If you're low, you can try hiding behind the rest of your team to try and regenerate some health. And if your enemy is retreating because you dealt more damage to them, try and play more aggressively. Same thing goes if your enemy team is using hard tech, as you don't want them to try and regenerate extra health. But by far the most important aspect of team fights is team coordination, 
So if one of your teammates is getting cornered by the enemies, then try and help them. And in general, just try and focus more on your team than on yourself in teamfights. When you are outnumbered by your enemies, you need to adjust your playstyle to suit the circumstance that you are in. Your best shots at dealing extra damage to your enemies are to try and bait your enemies into team hitting each other, or to try and hit two enemies at a time with the same swing. Despite what I said earlier, in teamfights it's actually recommended to use your stamina to try and run away from your enemy, as well as holding your block for longer. In general, in outnumbered teamfights you need to play more defensively and slowly decrease your enemy's health. Rather than normal fights where you would play more aggressively, only change your playstyle if you are low. Fighting against ranged weapons might seem a little difficult at first, or like the person you're fighting against could have an unfair advantage, but there are many things you can do to even out the playing field. First of all, if your enemy already has a loaded weapon, here are some things you can do to make yourself more difficult to hit. Most importantly, to use the terrain around you to give yourself an advantage, by hiding behind hills and trees. But when that isn't an option, try your best to move unpredictably. It's also recommended that you sprint when you do this, but again, avoid jumping as it'll take away too much of your stamina. Now, after your enemy has fired, try and push them as to make sure they don't reload again. If you land hits on your enemy while they're reloading, you can deal extra damage. You can also try and repeat this to drain some of your enemy's ammo. Fighting against combat glows can sometimes feel even more difficult than fighting against ranged weapons. But before learning how to fight against them, you must first be able to distinguish them and know their effects. I know this may sound a little bit confusing, but not every glowing weapon has combat glowy effects. Only weapons that emit particles are actually combat glowies. The rest are charged gems, which deal slightly more damage than normal weapons, but are pretty much the same otherwise. Combat glowies on the other hand, can have one of three effects. Either dealing damage over time, stamina drain, or lifesteal. But there's a video about all of these types of glowies that I'll link in the description. As for how you should fight against them, you should try and fight more defensively, using blocking a lot more, and keeping a good distance from your enemy. This might be a bit similar to what I mentioned in chapter 7, but it's the same idea. You have to focus more on keeping yourself alive than dealing damage to the enemy, as in both cases you have a higher chance of losing health. So, congratulations, you made it through the tutorial. Hopefully your Tradeland's PvP knowledge has improved thanks to it. But if there's anything I missed out on, please let me know by leaving a comment. I'm taking this time at the end of the video to address some things relating to my channel. First of all, if you're wondering where I was for the past 4-5 to five months, I was working on a different video. But I scrapped that idea and I had to start over again for this video. And by the time I'd started, I also had less time to work on the video since that's when school was about to start. And I knew I wanted the next video to be a Tradelands video, but I didn't know what to make it about. So coming up with the idea also took a little bit of time. But for now I have quite a few ideas for future videos. Especially with the amount of games being released this month. And I'll try to manage my time better so I can upload more regularly. Again, if you want to see more Tradelands or any other games played on the channel then let me know in the comments. And lastly, I have made my own Discord server for anyone who's interested. Uh, the link will be in the description. So with that, this has been Linket, and I want to thank you all very much for watching. I really appreciate it, and we'll see you in the next one.